everyone. Let's work through this additional funds needed or AFN a formula demonstration. We're looking at problem 14-1. Carter Corporation sales are expected to increase from 5 million in 2004 to 6 million in 2005, which is a 20% increase. Its assets were 3 million at the end of 2004. Now Carter is at full capacity, so its assets must grow at the same rate as projected sales. At the end of 2004, current liabilities were a million, consisting of 250,000 of accounts payable, 500,000 of the notes payable, and 250,000 of accruals. Its after-tax profit margin is, for, is forecasted to be 5%, and uh, the forecasted payout ratio is 70%. That means that they expect to pay 70 cents of every dollar that they earn in profits and retain 30%. Okay, and then it says use this information to answer problem 14.1. And 14, problem 14.1 says um, use the AFN formula and forecast how much additional funds the Carter Corporation will need. Okay, now this is based on the AFN formula, and let me uh, copy that in so we have that in front of us, okay? Um, and there's, very el there's various elements of the AFN formula. Uh, A star divided by S0 is the ratio of, uh, of expected assets to current sales, um, and we multiply that times the change in sales. Then we subtract off the spontaneous liabilities, which uh, expected spontaneous liabilities. That's what the L asterisk divided by uh, S, S of O stands for, and it's the ratio of spontaneous liabilities to sales. And we take that times uh, the change in sales we're expecting, and from there we back off the profit margin times our future sales and multiply that times 1 minus the dividend payout amount. Okay. So let's, why don't we drop various elements of this in and uh, solve this problem. And in the problem, we know that total assets were $3 million, um, and total sales were $5 million. Now, I'm going, rather than typing in $3 million divided by $5 million, I'll just enter 3 divided by 5. But really, those could be in, uh, in millions. We get the same percentage, right? So let's put an equal sign in front of it so that we get the, uh, the right value. Okay, then we need to multiply that times the change in sales, which is equal to 6 million. That's what we project, minus the current sales for 2004, which is 5 million, given in the problem. So our change in sales is a million. Okay, that actually would be in dollars. That takes care of our first term. Then from there, um, we also need to come up with the spontaneous liabilities as a percentage of sales. But we're only concerned with the ones that will change in relation to sales. Um, so we know it consists of 250,000 of accounts payable, 500,000 of notes payable, and 250,000 of accruals. That's the full amount of the current liabilities. But only two of these items actually are a spontaneous source of financing which means that as sales grow, we can expect um, our creditors, that would be our vendors for accounts payable, and accruals, think of that as the tax man, if, uh, if the accruals were, were made up of what we owe in terms of income taxes payable, that number will go up. So we, we do receive some spontaneous amount of financing from both of those items, but notes payable relates to an existing capital structure and an existing commitments. It would not represent a spontaneous source of finance. So let's put in those two $250,000 amounts. Okay, so that's the top part of the equation, getting us 500000 And then we need to divide that by the current period sales, which is $5 million. Okay, change that to a percent, and our spontaneous source of financing is a percent of the current level of sales is 10%. We also then have to copy the change in sales. We can 
let's simply copy it here. Um, that takes care of our second term. Now we need to take care of uh, the profit margin represented by M, uh, a sales for sub 1, and 1 minus uh, the dividend payout. Let me copy in those formulas. This one really just needs this to be the symbol M. Okay, and we know the profit margin is 5% given right there in the problem. So we'll enter that as 5%. S1 is $6 million, right? Why don't we enter that with a dollar sign? Uh, make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. There we go. And uh, bring this back to the right screen. Um, 1 minus the dividend represents the retention ratio, and the retention ratio would be equal to 1 minus 70%, since the problem indicates that 70% is paid out. Okay, now in all of these, this is all, if you will, just a great big formula. So let's uh, come up with the pieces that we need. So the first half, we take the 60% times the million, right? And we can copy that here to come up with the exact amount on of the spontaneous financing, right? That's the second term. Oh, and there's a subtraction in here. So I'll enter a little minus sign just so that we can follow uh, what we're doing. And then the last one is take the M times the projected sales times the retention ratio, and uh, that one is going to be in a dollar amount, too. We need to make this big enough so we can see it. There we go. And I'll shrink this so that the screen still looks about the same. Okay, so then all we need to do is solve this, which is take the 600000 of uh, additional assets we need, less the spontaneous financing provided by our creditors and others and then back off the amount of, um, of income. And we're thinking about income as really meaning cash income. By uh, And this third term represents the cash income that we intend to hold on to ourselves and use for internal purposes. And the end result is 410000 And I'll bold that. That is the answer to this problem. Okay, thank you, everyone.